Right, so Keir Starmer's Labour. Starmer, personally, in all probability, given what has happened, have a significant racism problem that is being largely ignored after it was weaponized to send Jeremy Corbyn packing, and nothing quite shows how blatant that is than the suspension of yet another black female Labour MP. Kate Osamore is the latest in a line of ethnic minority Labour MPs to end up on the receiving end of Starmeroid diktat following her Holocaust Memorial Day message. She dared to name Gaza amongst the genocides aside from the Holocaust that also get remembered on that day. Following the International Court of Justice ruling that there is a case of genocide to be heard against Israel, that the terms of prima facie were met, that at first glance there appears to be evidence of genocide committed by Israel in Gaza against the Gazan people, Osamor is completely correct to include Gaza, a genocide happening right now, that all leaders around the world would have a responsibility if their nations are signed up to the Genocide Convention as ours is to oppose that. Instead, the Labour Party of Keir Starmer has been completely Israeled. Osamor was pulled up for what she did and was made to apologise, which she did, meeting the requirements expected of her apparently by the party whips, only to find herself still suspended from the Labour Party following that anyway. This is not the first time Starmer and his ilk have opportunistically weaponized the party rules to attack the left member of his own parliamentary party. Not the first time that this has been directed at an ethnic minority member of his party either. And not the first time Israel has been at the center of such action at that, with such presence as that state appears to have within the Labour Party. But by punishing an MP for basically echoing the opinion of the highest court in the world, Starmer and co are effectively banning free thought. You do and say what you're told, or else. Right, so doing and saying what you're told, well, we know that's how Keir Starmer likes to lead. Someone holds his hand and tells him what to say and do and what to think, and if in doubt, well, just copy Rishi Sunak. The question has always been one of who exactly is it telling him what to do. Peter Mandelson and Tony Blair always spring to mind. If that doesn't show a blind spot to war crimes, I'm not sure what does. But he runs his party like a version of theirs, just even more hardline on the disciplinary front. But it always seems to be rotten lefties that get punished, making it factional, but also too often blatantly racist. Let's start with Kate Olsen more, because this is what has got people incensed that Starmer's purging of unwanted socialist and left-wing elements of his party is happening under the guise of pretty much anything that can be weaponized against them. As I covered in another video, Kate Olsen more, the day before Holocaust Memorial Day, which was this past Saturday, put out a message of memorial saying, Tomorrow is Holocaust Memorial Day, an international day to remember the six million Jews murdered during the Holocaust, the millions of people murdered under Nazi persecution of other groups, and more recent genocides in Cambodia, Rwanda, Bosnia, and now Gaza. Now, the ICJ ruling, in my view, now makes this an entirely pro appropriate thing to say. They have found that the legal definition of genocide in relation to Israel's actions in Gaza has been met at prima facie. They are the highest court in the world. Anyone who thinks they know better than them really needs to have some balls. And balls really aren't something I'd associate with Keir Starmer. Not with that voice and certainly not with his conduct and what passes for leadership in Labour today. Picking on MPs, however, is something to associate with the Starmer regime. Bullying and intimidation. And as such, an apology and correction was evidently demanded of Osamor, as she later tweeted out, Holocaust Memorial Day is a day to remember the six million Jews killed in the Holocaust and the genocides that have occurred since. I apologise for any offence caused by my reference to the ongoing humanitarian disaster in Gaza as part of that period of remembrance. That, we are told, was the requirement by the party whips to put an end to this matter. It doesn't matter that this is what Osamor did, though. It wasn't enough for somebody or something, possibly Starmer himself. We know, after all, that he personally abused his own executive powers to keep Jeremy Corbyn suspended when accused of anti-Semitism and cleared by the Labour NEC. But equally, the influence of Israel is so pervasive that this simply may not have been enough for such elements in relation to that. Look at the determination of a Knesset member at this moment in time, Danny Dannon, right now to see a Sky News host, Bel Donati, sacked for daring to hold him to account for comments he'd made in relation to ethnic cleansing. When somebody gets one up on them, they simply cannot just let it go. And equally, when someone chooses to say something they don't like, even when it has basis in law right now, at prima facie level anyway, the accusation of genocide, they can't have that either. Labour equally, shamelessly, have aped Rishi Sunak and the Tories in continuing to support Israel, right down to backing their reprehensible 
and human rights violating, in my view, decision to withdraw aid from UNRWA, the UN Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian Refugees. This is collective punishment. This is Labour going along with the Tories in committing a war crime. It's also quite telling that Labour have gone along with this on the basis of Israel-made accusations, which may have about as much truth to them as Starmer's 10 leadership pledges did. Against just 12 UNRWA workers, yet they've made nothing, no acknowledgement, nothing about the 152 UNRWA workers who have died in Gaza, literally doing their job, helping Palestinians. Starmer's labour is one of utter moral cowardice. So, anyway, we know that labour is full of such people. Starmer himself recruited a member of the IDF to spy on members' social media, even whilst he was laying off staff elsewhere because he'd blown the money that he'd been left as he became leader, settling legal fees of cases the party was involved in, notably one against Panorama whistleblowers, and we all know now what they were blowing hot air about. Legal advice was the party would win, but that wasn't the point. Starmer is a Zionist without qualification, and his actions very much appear to mean that is one thing about him we can definitely trust. He owes being leader of the party in no small part to donations from people linked to the Israel lobby. 73 of his MPs count themselves amongst Labour Friends of Israel, a group which Starmer frankly should have prescribed because of the charges and provisional orders laid down by the World Court against Israel. But of course he won't. He's one of them. His NEC counts a literal paid Israel lobbyist amongst its number, the director of We Believe in Israel, Luke Akerst, who would dismiss him from being behind this incident with Kate Osamon. So the influence of Israel and Labour is well known, well established, but the treatment of Osamor here is also massively hypocritical. Back in July 2020, Labour MP Steve Reid made a very ill-advised and crass comment attacking Richard Desmond, a Tory donor and former proprietor of the comic pretending to be a newspaper that we call the Daily Express. In relation to that housing scandal that honest Bob Robert Jenrick was involved in, do you remember that one? It wasn't so long ago, it's a little bit hard to forget. There was a big hoo-ha about that, wasn't there? Well, it was Desmond that Jenrick was trying to get off some of the fees. He was the guy whose housing development was involved. And even though he's a billionaire and Desmond could well afford it, Jenrick was trying to save him some money. Well, Reid referred to Desmond as a puppet master for the entire Tory cabinet, thinking himself, oh, so witty and clever, but negating to realise that Desmond was also Jewish. And by calling him a puppet master, he'd invoked a well-known anti-Semitic trope. Reid apologised, of course. And that was that, because he's not a lefty, he's not black, and he's quite male. He literally said something racist, and nothing happened. No suspension, no censure, no nothing. He apologised for it, and that was that. But then Kate Osamore was told exactly the same thing, and what she said is based entirely on the verdict of the International Court of Justice. So it isn't racist if it's true. Double standards, staggering, but then there are so many more examples of free thought and free speech, especially against ethnic minority members of the Labour Party, that we can point at. Nadia Whitten was sacked as a PPC for voting against UK troops being made exempt from prosecution for war crimes and torture. Kim Johnson at PMQs last year asked this of Rishi Sunak. Since the election of the fascist Israeli government in December last year, there has been an increase in human rights violations against Palestinian civilians, including children. So can the Prime Minister tell us how he is challenging what Amnesty and other human rights organisations are referring to as an apartheid state? A fair enough question, especially in light of what we know at this moment in time now, and the strength of wording entirely appropriate given the language we hear coming from some of Netanyahu's ministers. But again, an apology was forced out of her for asking that question because she later returned to the Commons to say, I would like to apologise unreservedly for the intemperate language I used during PMQs. I was wrong to use the term fascist in relation to the Israeli government and understand why this was particularly insensitive given the history of the State of Israel. And while there are far-right elements in the government, I recognise the use of the term was wrong. I would also like to apologise for the use of the term apartheid state. While I was quoting accurately Amnesty's description, I recognise this is insensitive and would like to withdraw it. Says everything about the Labour Party of Keir Starmer today though, doesn't it? Absana Begum is another Labour MP, another rotten lefty, ethnic minority Labour MP, uh, who'd been on the receiving end of Starmer's ire. She faced domestic violence, she's a domestic violence survivor. She got no support from the Labour Party throughout any of that. They hoped that her being dragged to court on trumped up charges of housing benefit fraud would enable them to expel her. But she got cleared, much to their annoyance. The lack of support she had throughout all of that, though, ended up hospitalising her at one point. 
Diane Abbott sent out the wrong copy of a newspaper comment, uh, comment coming on for a year ago now and was suspended over that despite also issuing a swift retraction, clarification and apology. It is opportunistic attacks, not just on the left, but in so many cases against people of ethnic minority background. And it's not going unnoticed around the country with the sheer number of councillors and constituency party officers and other Labour Party members resigning from the party in disgust, pointing at racism as one of the reasons behind that. Notably, this has come in recent times from the Muslim and Jewish members in light of the pro-Israel stance of the party leadership. Nothing will shake the unwavering support of Keir Starmer's Labour for Israel, not even, it seems, charges of genocide. And you want to put these people in power to get the Tories out? Are you mad? Of course, there's been praise for Labour's treatment of Osamor from the usual suspects. The Board of Deputies of British Jews, very much pro-Israel and very much not representative of all British Jewry, tweeted out, we commend the Labour Party for suspending the whip from Ms. Osamor following her disgraceful comments regarding Holocaust Memorial Day. This is the right decision, sending a clear message that such behaviour is unacceptable. We trust that the investigation will proceed swiftly. You can trust that it won't. The investigation I want to proceed swiftly is the one happening in The Hague, though. Diane Abbott has been waiting for over a year, so swift is not the name of the game here. The clock's ticking, and the general election is coming, and they're hoping time's going to run out on these people. The Jewish Labour movement, where you need neither be Jewish nor in Labour to be a part of, but the go-to authority within Labour on all things anti-Semitic, so you can guess where their opinion on Israel takes them as well, therefore, put out a statement too, saying, This week we've been commemorating the murder of six million Jews in the Holocaust and those who perished in subsequent genocides. Sadly, Kate Osamore MP used Holocaust Memorial Day to make an inappropriate and offensive comparison to the war in Gaza. Her subsequent non-apology rang hollow. These days we know the Labour Party is better than this. We join others, including our own CLP, in calling for Labour to suspend her whilst they investigate. Well, they did suspend her, and her comparison is entirely valid, given the ICJ verdict the other day. And how can it be a non-apology when her apology literally included the words, I apologise? Nothing will satisfy these rancid organisations and individuals. Labour is full of people like this, led by the same. I could not despise a political party in this country more right now for being so depraved on something so serious. It is a party of anti-black racism, Islamophobia and collective punishment of Palestinians. I can go further, but don't take my word for it. Take the words of others. Read the Labour leaks report. Read the Ford report. Starmer refuses to. He's even banned his MPs from speaking to Martin Ford, the KC who authored it also himself black, and who himself has said anti-black racism and Islamophobia is not taken as seriously as anti-Semitism within the Labour Party. By definition, that makes the party racist. If one form of racism is more important than another, and if you want an idea of how entrenched in the Labour Party Israeli state actors are, go on YouTube and watch Al Jazeera's The Lobby. And if you'd forgotten about that, watch it again, because things haven't changed, even if some of the faces have. And if you want yet one more example of this, you should watch this video here concerning another decent black Labour MP, Dawn Butler, who literally wrote a book on what she has faced within the Labour Party as a black woman. Don't take my word for it. Take hers and watch this video next, and I'll hopefully catch you on the next vid. Cheers, folks.